and welcome back to the Touchline Talk Show. Appreciate the comments rolling in. One of them said four tiers. Yes, we are actually breaking this all the way down into four tiers. I'm going to make this relatively quick. I'm not going to elaborate too much on all of these tiers, but we do have four tiers to break these teams into, starting with what I will call tier four, which is the underdogs. These are the teams I would be surprised to see get out of the group stage. Essentially, that's kind of the way I'm defining it. I've got seven of them, and I'm just going in order of groups. And then if there are two teams from the same group, alphabetical. So not ranking them within the tiers. But the seven I have, Qatar from group A, Saudi Arabia from group C, Australia from group D, Tunisia from group D, Costa Rica from group E, Cameroon from group G, and Ghana from group H. The other thing I'll say is this is not looking at the actual group setups. This is just these teams in a vacuum, what I think they can do in this tournament. Ghana, I almost put into the dark horse category. But the two players I mentioned, Naki Williams, Tarek Lamptey, we haven't seen them with Ghana. Those were new additions that just got their eligibility for Ghana. The goalkeeping situation is, through no fault of Ghana's own, a disaster with these injuries. So I, I was tempted, but I just couldn't bring myself to actually put them in the dark horse category, which is up next. So I'm defining our dark horses as teams that could very well get out of the group stage, and you wouldn't be necessarily surprised to see them end up in the quarterfinals or something. But there is a ceiling where you don't see, I don't see them going past one or two rounds into the knockout stage. I've got 12 of these. Ecuador from Group A, Senegal from Group A, Iran from Group B, United States from Group B, Wales from Group B, Mexico from Group C, Poland from Group C, Japan from Group E, Canada from Group F, Morocco from Group F, Serbia from Group G, and South Korea from Group H. Couple teams I want to highlight in particular here. Ecuador, I really like that young core. They were a team I considered putting in underdogs. But to me, there, there is enough that it's not out of the realm of possibility they find a way to get out of their group. Senegal, I have here instead of contenders, primarily because of that Sadio Mane injury. And, you know, Edward Mendy has not had a good season. So they're not the, they are not the same team. They're not what they looked like when they won the Africa Cup of Nations. So I knocked them down a little bit for that. They're certainly one of the teams, if I were ranking my dark horses, they'd certainly be near the top. United States, I do ultimately think there's a ceiling on this. As much as Greg Berhalter wants to say you get into the knockout rounds and anything can happen, which is true. I just, I see a limit where we're talking about being one of the best 10 or so teams in the world rather than one of the best 4 to 8. Same thing with Wales, Mexico. Poland, Canada, it's a lot to ask a team that's never done this before to go all the way to getting not only out of a group, but into, you know, the semifinal conversation. As much as I like this Canada team, they're not quite there yet. And I mentioned how much I like Serbia. Again, a, a team that hasn't done this before, so I wasn't going to go jump them all the way up to the next category but they are also one of those teams higher on my list of dark horses. Next, we have contenders. So I'm defining contenders as teams you could absolutely see ending up in the semifinals that you wouldn't be stunned if they won the entire tournament. However, you wouldn't pick them to do so is basically the definition I'm going with. So I have seven. Netherlands from Group A, Denmark from Group D, Germany from Group A, E, Belgium from Group F, Croatia from Group F, Switzerland from Group G, and Uruguay from Group H. I also think there's a ceiling on this Netherlands team. But if things fall right, I'm not ruling out the possibility that they can get to a semifinal. Denmark, they have what you want, which is an incredibly strong spine right up the middle of the field outside of the striker position. If they can figure that out, they can be 
significantly better than they were at Euro 2020, and they got to the semifinals there. Germany, until I see this team, this group of players, actually deliver, I can't put them any higher than contenders. Belgium, this is the tournament where they drop from that the next category, which I'll get to in a minute, down to contenders because they just don't have the same kind of depth and world-class talent. Croatia, they're probably the definition of this, what they did in 2018. Nobody was saying Croatia's going to make the final, but then you kind of look at it and you go, well, it's not all that stunning. Switzerland, kind of same idea. They've been so good and they're so good playing against the best teams in the world. They see it so often in UEFA that I had to put them in this group. And then Uruguay, arguably one of the eight best teams in the world. So, you know, you can just argue on the face of it, they should make the quarterfinals. So those are my contenders. And then we have the favorites. These are the teams that I feel like are logical picks to win the entire thing for varying reasons, which I'll get to quickly here, but I have six. So these are your final six teams. England from Group B, Argentina from Group C, France from Group D, Spain from Group E, Brazil from Group G, and Portugal from Group H. England from Group B, they are built to succeed at major tournaments with the way Gareth Southgate plays. They did bring those two guys I mentioned in Jack Grealish and James Madison to give you some of that offensive firepower. Harry Kane can go win you games on his own. They're exceptionally talented. You can absolutely talk yourself into England finding a way to actually bring it home on top of what the women's team did winning the European Championship. Argentina, very simple. Messi, A. And again, I don't think this point can be overemphasized. A free Messi without carrying the weight of not having won something for Argentina. This is the best Argentina team he's been around from a fit standpoint, from a chemistry standpoint. They're the most informed team in the world. Obviously, they're a favorite. France, just go look at the squad, even with the injuries. Obviously, they're a favorite. They won it in 2018. Spain, I went back and forth a little bit, but ultimately what they did at Euro 2020 convinced me there is a, and, you know, the odds makers are putting them up there as a favorite. They were probably the last team I included on this list, but they did enough for me to convince me that not only are they capable of getting the semifinals, they are capable of winning this whole thing. That's not the part I have an issue with. The part I have more of an issue with is whether they actually are going to do so. And then Brazil, again, just go look at the squad, look at the players that got left off. It's Brazil. This is a exceptional Brazil team. They're just basically always one of the favorites, and certainly this group is. And I put Portugal in here, too, for kind of the same reason as Spain. If it goes well, they can absolutely win this entire thing. They have one of the best five rosters in this tournament. I'm not convinced it's going to go that way. But they do, I mean, they do have a major tournament. This is not reliant on Cristiano Ronaldo. They are loaded. So those are my six teams. Those are the four tiers 